Good evening, my name is Mikel Gomez and I'm a student in AP government at McClintock High School. Tonight, we are moderating a forum for the Tempe Elementary Governing Board candidates. The candidates are Ms. Ewers and Ms. Trejo. Candidates, we will ask you several questions tonight and you will have 60 seconds to answer the questions. A timer will display the countdown on a Zoom window for the candidates to see and your microphones will be turned off when your time is up. But first, we will begin with opening statements. Ms. Ewers, you may go first. Well, hi, and thank you so much. My name is Allison Ewers, running for Tempe Elementary School Board, and I want to thank the uh, McClintock High AP government class for doing this. When I got Paul Rosenbaum's email, I was so excited to see that you guys were engaged in this, because frankly, this is one of the most important elections of your life. There's a lot of changes going on, and those changes are going to affect your generation more than any other generation that's in existence right now. So thank you for doing this. I'm proud of you guys for doing this, and I will continue to support you as you go through it. Um, I'm an Arizona native, born and raised here. I went to Encanto, Clarendon, Sunny Slope, and the University of Arizona. And I um, am a recipient of the Phoenix Film Festival uh, Visionary Award, which was one of my uh, proudest accomplishments on several boards, including Local First Arizona, where I recruit, recruit local businesses to stay here and thrive here so we can continue to put money back in our schools. Um, it's important uh, for me to be in this race because I want to be a part of the education of where we're going forward. Thank you, Ms. Ewers, and now Ms. Trejo. Hi, everyone. Good evening. My name is Monica Trejo, and I'm running for re-election for the Tempe Elementary School District Governing Board. I also want to thank the staff and students from McClintock AP Government course for hosting and organizing this forum. Um, a little bit about me. I am a former special education teacher, um, taught different subjects. I was a school administrator. I have experience in healthcare, entrepreneurship, policy, and governance. I am also a proud Tempe resident. I actually just purchased my home this month which is a huge blessing for me. For much of my childhood, I was technically homeless. So I know the importance of you know, what education can do to help transform your life. And because of that, I am a forever advocate for our students and staff. And I hope to continue to serve my community. If there's anything this pandemic has shown us, it's about how critical and essential our schools are for a functioning governance and also how important it is to meet the needs of our community. And that was Jonas, so you might hear him occasionally. So thank you guys. Thank you for your opening statement. And now on to tonight's question. The first question, what training or educational experience qualifies you to be a school board member? Ms. Ewers, you may go first. Well, one of the unique experiences that I have is that I'm on the host committee for what used to be the Intel, but now it's the Regeneron International Science and Engineering Fair. And I get to see the winners from around the world, those who are representing their country, including the United States of America, that come in and we have this event in different states throughout the United States. They come in and they compete and they compete for scholarships. They compete um, to, for companies, for jobs. And I get to see where we are in the world as far as science, technology, engineering, math. And I'm a, a big supporter of the arts. Uh, I'm involved in uh, Convergence Ballet, which is for the youth and for um, summer programs for ballet. Uh, so I kind of am all encompassing as far as my focus on that. I also am a business owner and I, I, I'm having a difficulty finding employees and students who are ready for the workforce. So I believe all this starts at a kindergarten level and uh, I think that my, my business connections, my, my client connections, I can bring a, a good amount of knowledge and, um, and interworking relationships to the board that I think will help. Thank you, and now Ms. Trejo. Would you like me to repeat the question? Um, no, that's okay. Um, as mentioned, I have experience in education as a teacher from multiple grade levels and abilities. Um, I've been a school administrator. Um, I serve on the board currently, but what's most important to me is the professional development along the way. Um, I actually, in my former professional role, I taught school board members um, in education topics on governance, everyone um, from elected officials from school board to Congress on how to govern more efficiently and effectively from Arizona to um, across the United States. Um, uh, as mentioned, I also have a degree in healthcare. I actually have a degree in global health, which is 
you know, so learning about pandemics is something I'm very familiar with. Um, I also studied anthropology, um, real estate. Um, I'm also earning my, I have two masters in education and earning my doctorate in education leadership and policy. Um, and so I'm, I feel very fortunate to have worked with, with different people from different sectors, from the business community to um, our, you know, our mayor and our, our council as well. Um, so working with them throughout my past four years on programs like Tempe Pre, um, free preschool for low income families is something that has been very important to me and something I'd like to continue to expand. So I actually launched a social emotional learning cohort uh, across jurisdictions throughout Arizona um, to help you know, meet the needs, uh, social emotional needs of our students. Thank you, and we shall now be going on to the second question. The question is, what is one thing the district does well? Ms. Trejo, you may go first. I, I'm incredibly proud of the staff that we have. I think one thing that, that they have been able to do is um, be very effective in hiring great staff members, and, and whether that's teachers, um, administrators, I feel very proud of that sense. I think that there's a lot that the, the district has done. One thing, you know, when we talk about roles of, of school boards, um, there's really three primary functions in addition to a couple other things, but, you know, um, one of those includes monitoring and approving the budget. There's a lot of ideas we have, but we can't do that without having, um, you know, a proper budget on point. And one thing I'm incredibly proud of, of the district is that we've been able to win awards in excellence in accounting from governance um, finance official awards to ASBO, um, Arizona School Business Official Awards. And that's in part to the great staff we have from um, Liz Yeski, our CFO, to Eric Thompson, our new CFO. And so I'm just incredibly proud that we're able to be most efficient um, and effective with the resources that we have. Thank you. And now it's Ms. Ewer's turn. Would you like me to repeat the question? Okay, thank you so much. There's so much this district does so well, but you only give us a minute to answer. So one thing that I'd like to make everyone aware of is that uh, Tempe Elementary was more prepared for this COVID crisis than any of the uh, other elementaries that, I, that I'm watching. Uh, our students had computers. Uh, they worked closely with uh, services such as Cox to get internet to those students who had never had it before. I think that's one of the pluses that I've seen coming out of this whole crisis is that we had hundreds of students that didn't have internet and we finally got them online, which is important for them and their families. And it stops the inequity as much as we can during that moment. Um, the teachers jumped in. They started learning quickly how to do online school. I mean, I saw teachers all summer that were calling me and saying, hey, can I put Brody on, who's my son? Can we see if he likes what I'm doing, what I'm not, is, am I keeping his attention? And it's a hometown feel in Tempe. We're really lucky to have that small town feel and have the teachers and the resources um, and, this, and, and the students and the, and the smaller size schools. We get to have smaller schools, which is important to the in, in, intimacy um, of what we have going on. So I just, I commend everyone because a crisis lets you know how good you are. And I'm just impressed and I'm excited to have the opportunity to be a part of this team. Thank you. And I would like to remind the candidates that you have 50 seconds to answer the question. Next to the third question. What do you feel is the ideal way for Tempe elementary students to receive their education during COVID-19? And what are you prepared to do to move the district in that direction if it is not there already? Ms. Ewers, you may go first. That's a very personal question for families. Uh, my family is gonna be completely different than the circumstances that a family just down the street has. I think one of the main things that we have to concentrate on is the safety of our teachers and our students, period. Um, there's a lot to learn about what's going on with COVID. And luckily, um, our school district follows science, and that's where we're getting our information. I think that's what's good for my family is not necessarily good for every family. We have students who need to be in school. They need to be in a safe place, and nutrition is a big deal to me. Uh, we need to make sure that our children are, are eating and that their minds are growing. So however we have to do that, I think the district's answering that. They're offering online and they're offering in school. And uh, the, the parents can decide. And it's a tough decision being a parent. Uh, so I, I think that's what's important is having choices. And I think the district is meeting that and I will continue to support that. 
Thank you. Right now it's Ms. Trejo's turn. Would you like me to repeat the question? No, thanks. That's okay. Thank you. Um, yes, I agree with Ms. Yours completely. I think that we have different needs um, for different families. I, we've, I received tons of emails and so thankful for the investment of, of our teachers and our parents. And as Allison mentioned earlier, for them to be able to step up during this critical time, um, both at home and in the, you know, whether they were in the classroom. So thank you so much to, to everybody who was able to step up. I do believe that the choice is important, but first and foremost, we must follow the metrics and science, um, you know, data that has been established by, you know, our, our local and county officials. So I feel very lucky that we have um, people who are able to, to support us and, and be, that have been flexible in that sense. The parent choice is critical and we will be offering online as well as in-person options because there are parents who, who, you know, have different needs. And so I think that Ellison was spot on with that. And so I feel very fortunate that our staff has been able to, to rise to the occasion to meet all of those needs for our students. Thank you, and now to question four. Considering that funding is an ongoing challenge for the district, how should the district best go about gaining more funding and why that way? Ms. Treo, you may go first. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm very proud of there's, we, there's so many things that we need to do, but you can't do that unless your budget's in order. And we're lucky that we have really great, um, you know, chief financial officer in place that that has helped us been able to do that. And in the past, it's Lizieski, and now it's it's Eric. So I feel very, very fortunate. And we need more funding, right? Our districts are doing more with less. And that's not just Tempe Elementary. That's every district in Arizona. I, I'm a native Arizonan. I grew up when our schools were, were properly funded, um, where we had, everyone had preschool. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that the cities had to, had to pull their weight to, to have it. it. It was that everybody, you know, a lot of schools had preschools. So I feel that we're able to do more with less, but the budget is one of the most critical components to a, a functional district. And I'm proud of the financial stewardship that my district has exhibited. Um, and I, I just am thankful for that because we can't do anything without ensuring that our budget is, is um, balanced and also that we are monitoring and approving that appropriately. Thank you, and now it's Ms. Ewer's turn. Would you like me to repeat the question? Sure, repeat it one more time. Considering that funding is an ongoing challenge for the district, how should the district best go about gaining more funding and why that way? So it's unique with schools that we have to rely on others to choose what we get. What we do with it is what makes a board so important. I, was, I had the pleasure of going around and visiting schools and looking at the books um, with Superintendent Bush a couple weeks ago, and it was very transparent. Um, I was happy to, to see that, and I can assure other parents that it's that way. And our school district is in good standing. Um, we have a lot of trials and tribulations, just as others do, uh, but the, the, the community support is where, we, where whenever we have a, a lack or a need, a teacher steps up, or a parent steps up, or the community steps up, we're very unique and lucky in that way. As far as what's most important for us is where I come in is I have a good relationship with our state legislators and I can call them on the phone and say, this is important to us. This is important for our children. And I have no problem doing that. And I think that'll be a strong asset that I can bring to the board. Thank you. And now on to our fifth question. Upon leaving the Tempe Elementary School District, what skills and attributes should a student have? Ms. Ewers, you may go first. I love this question because one of my main focuses with my own child and with the people that I talk to that we really have to look at is the, the whole child experience. Um, education has kind of gone in the direction, as we all know, of test taking and A plus and B plus and C plus. And, in, and what I, what I would love to see, and I know that it's, it's happening, is that we look at the whole child. How are they? Are they empathetic? Um, are they aware? Um, do they want to try new things? Are they apprehensive? Are they excited? And these are the skills in life that we need. Anyone can learn anything if they have the right mindset. And I think the foundation of an elementary education is to give the child the tools to learn and to be themselves and to grow 
and um, and that whole child experience, like really focusing on that and allowing the teachers the availability to do that because they get to know our kids just as well as the parents do. Thank you, Ms. Trejo. You may now answer the question. Would you like me to repeat it? Sure, yeah. Upon leaving the Tempe Elementary School District, what skills and attributes should a student have? Thank you. Yeah, I agree with Ms. Ewers there. I think she spoke to a lot of the soft skills that students need. Um, one of the things that I was able to do uh, across the country and, and also have some programming here um, at Tempe as well is work with local businesses and also um, corporate social responsibility organizations that help students through social entrepreneurship. And one of the things that a lot of the business owners say is that our students need more soft skills and they're speaking about students in general. And so helping students be prepared with those soft skills that Allison alluded to, I think is very critical. In addition to obviously making sure they're academically prepared to meet the curriculum of secondary and post-secondary education. So I think offering more opportunities for rigorous curriculum for some of our advanced students and also helping ensure that our students that are struggling academically are able to, to meet grade level, um, if, if not higher as well. Um, and I don't think that that needs to be done through testing also, as Allison uh, alluded to. Um, testing is not necessarily the way to go about that, but we wanna make sure that our kids are ready in those soft and academic skills. Thank you, and now to question number six. What types of partnerships do you envision with other schools and districts within Arizona while you are on the board? And what would you do personally to build those relationships? Ms. Trejo, you may go first. Uh, I appreciate this question so much because I truly believe cross-sector and cross-jurisdictional relationships are absolutely essential to meet the needs of our students. As we know that Tempe is not an island, we have to work with ASU, especially right now during this pandemic. We have to work with Tempe Union. We have to work with Kyrene and other neighboring schools. And the one thing that um, I'm really proud of is I'm a very active member of the school board association and literally constantly talk with other school board members and on how to collaborate. Um, also working with our, our legislators who I also connect with and um, work with on previous projects, um, working closely with the mayor and city council on programs like expanding Tempe free and sustaining that. And also proud that I found out Tempe um, expanded some of their resources is for CARE 7 that will help meet the social emotional needs of our community. So cross-sector and cross-jurisdictional needs are absolutely essential. It truly takes a village to help educate children. We cannot do this alone, and especially right now during this pandemic, we really need everyone to play their part. Thank you. Ms. Ewers, it's now your turn. Would you like me to repeat the question? I'm okay. Thank you. Um, President Trejo was right on with what she said, that um, we, it's imperative that we communicate with all of the um, school districts that are in our neighborhood. Uh, we, uh, we have students and we have families. We have pam families who are participating in all of them, ASU, Kyrene, Tempe, Tempe Union. Um, so building the relationships with the school board members is something that I actually look forward to doing. We have a unique situation with Tempe Elementary that the school board members get along. And um, we already, even as candidates, speak often to each other uh, because basically right now with COVID, we got to just, it's an army. Like uh, Ms. Trejo said, we've got to get, we got to get through this together. So um, uh, building a relationship with those who are on the next board and the other school districts is imperative. And, um, and, and asking the community to support. One thing that's really important to me is that everyone does their job keeping themselves safe so that we can get our kids back in school. Thank you, and now to question number seven. Given the challenges to the community posed by the COVID-19 situation, should schools have more, the same, or less emphasis on testing or focus instead on the social emotional needs of the community and why? Ms. Ewers, you may go first. As a parent, I've already seen that we're shifting our focus onto the child rather than the test. We have to. Um, every family is uniquely different, especially in online learning. We have parents that are working full time, including myself. We have uh, single parents that have three children who are trying to overcome doing all of this on their own and keep their job. Um, we have daycares that are closed. We have all of these things that are going on. 
And we, we need to look at the child and getting through this. And why, when I say getting through this, I think we have a lot to learn of how to move forward. Um, I look at this crisis as one of the benefits that this generation is going to see is that we shift from what grade are you in, uh, what grade have you hit, um, to how are you today, and what have you learned? Um, I think it's it, we've got to keep our young minds growing and engaged, and, sometime, and, and right now is not the time to be just concentrating on a test and the score, because then you have that child get a mindset of where... Thank you, and Ms. Trejo, it's your turn to answer the question. Would you like me to repeat it? Um, no, thank you. Uh, I think this is a really important question and something that I certainly have a lot of personal connection with. Um, I think the most important question is, what do standardized tests really do? Um, they don't determine a student's potential or success, because I can speak from my own experience. I'm a native Arizonan. Before the Arizona mayor, there was the AIMS. I failed the AIMS test in high school. But when I went to college, I graduated ranked first in my program at ASU, and now I'm earning my doctorate from Columbia University. So those tests, standardized tests, the overemphasis um, corporatization of our standardized tests and is not helpful, it's harmful to our public schools in a lot of ways. But we have to do them because right now there are laws and policies both federally and at the state level that are tied to funding and we have letter grade systems that unfortunately we have to do this. I urge the legislature to take action and basically help suspend the merit and labels for this school year because it will be detrimental to all of our schools and students. Thank you, and now to question eight. What measures would you take to recruit and retain qualified teachers amidst Arizona's teacher shortage at the Tempe Elementary School District level? Ms. Trail, you may go first. I feel very lucky to be in Tempe Elementary with such amazing teachers right now. And the reality is it is hard. It has been hard being a teacher. Uh, I can speak personally from my experience when I was teaching in the public schools, making $35,000 a year, unfortunately, wasn't financially feasible for me. Thankfully, we had a little bit of raises since then, but it is not enough for a lot of our teachers to, to support their families and themselves as well. I think it's important that we teach, um, that we basically use educators and treat them as the professionals as they are, because a lot of times I feel that that's not necessarily the case. So there's not a shortage of teachers. There's a shortage, of, there's plenty of certified teachers in Arizona, but there's a shortage of people being able to sustain teaching for financial purposes. And I think it's important that we help do as much as we can to advocate for more funding so we can give them the pay and benefits that they deserve so they can continue to educate our children because we want quality teachers for that and that is what we need. Thank you, it's now Ms. Ewer's turn. Would you like me to repeat the question? Sure, if you don't mind. What measures would you take to recruit and retain qualified teachers amidst Arizona's teacher shortage at the Tempe Elementary School District level? Just a few years ago, I was over in Australia at Vaughn University. We were talking about healthcare and education. I was at a forum and a gentleman came up to me and he said, what is going on in the United States? And I thought, oh God, I don't know. Did we have something else crazy happen? And he said, no, no, what's going on with education? Here in our country, we teach, our teachers are more important than our doctors. They're our future. What are you guys doing? And with that said, we need to have the mindset of that. And if we don't, it's detrimental to the future of, of this entire country. Uh, my two main concerns with uh, teacher retention and the type of teachers uh, that we want to recruit is we really need Hispanic teachers in the classrooms. We need Spanish speaking staff. Um, we are over 50% Hispanic in our district and those students uh, deserve to have communication. So it's, it's a long haul, it's a 15 year goal, but we need to start at the level of education and educating teachers to wanna to come into the field to stay. I have so much more I wanna to talk to about this, but I just got the beep beep. Thank you, and now to question nine. How will the Tempe Elementary School District ensure high quality education for all students? Ms. Ewers, you may go first. 
Do you remind repeating that one more time? I was thinking about BB in my head. I don't know why I called it BB. How will the Tempe Elementary School District ensure high quality education for all students? The investment. Um, one, making sure that every dollar goes to as much of it as possible can go to the classroom. Um, I think that we, we don't have an expense issue, we have an investment issue. And we need to make sure that we keep our eye on the ball and we need to invest because I can guarantee you every dollar that we put into these students, we're gonna get two, three, four dollars back in the future. Um, that's not, you can't guarantee that on the market, but you can guarantee that with this. Um, I, I think that we need to retain our teachers. I think we need to make it possible for our teachers to be able to live within our community. We're outpricing uh, our homes are, are becoming way more expensive than the salaries that we're giving them. And I think community is important. I grew up in a community school where everyone was um, held accountable. And I think that accountability came because we were neighbors and we knew each other. Um, so I, I'd like to see that. And I think with COVID, we're getting back to that. We're getting back to the basics. And the basics have been successful for years. Uh, so I'd like, to see, I'd like to see more of that. And I will continue to support those things. Thank you, it's now Ms. Treo's turn. Would you like me to repeat the question? Yes, please. How will the Tempe Elementary School District ensure high quality education for all students? Thank you. Uh, answering this question in one minute is, is probably impossible, but I'll try. Um, I think Allison alluded to a bit of that. You know, when we talk about student success um, and academic, academic achievement, 67% uh, of student success is actually based on outside of school factors. Um, according to Dr. Berliner, uh, that, is, that means we need access to great healthcare. We need access to, you know, food, um, making sure that, you know, we have um, opportunities for them to meet their physiological needs as well. So I think that that's all encompassing and Allison alluded to that within this pandemic. If there's anything that our schools have done is that we have risen to the occasion um, I know what it's like, you know, like I said, to be homeless and when your only meal is is from school. So that's important that we continue to do that to help them meet, you know, um, to, to help them be able to learn. And obviously having great staff, great teachers, great programs, expanding programs um, like dual language programs, uh, you know, something that I would really like to, to offer to our students. Expanding Tempe Pre is great for social, emotional and academic development. So things like that. Thank you. And now to question 10. What is the best way the Tempe Elementary District can communicate between the school board and parent or members of the community? Ms. Treo, you may go first. Can you read the question again, please? What is the best way the Tempe Elementary District can communicate between the school board and parent and members of the community? Um, I think com communication comes in all forms. First and foremost is accessibility, right? And when I say accessibility, I mean language, I mean tools. Um, so we have like students from 70 that speak 70 different languages. So helping ensure that, that they are able to, to meet that need um, if they don't understand, helping ensure that we're meeting parents with their most common form of communication, I think is really important. Um, I know we have things like Peach Jar. Um, sometimes that doesn't work for parents. Um, I know social media seems to be a favorite as well. Um, all platforms. I think that there's different forms. Um, I know I get tons of emails every day and I appreciate that from parents. We, we read all of the emails as well. Um, I think it depends on preference because par um, different parents have different preferences and I think it's important to be able to meet them. And I think it's important that we're using all platforms to ensure that our message is getting out, which is something that I think that we're doing, but we can also definitely improve upon as well. Thank you, it's now Ms. Ewer's turn. Would you like me to repeat the question? I'm okay, thank you. So this is one of the main reasons why I'm running. This is one of the places that I feel that I have a strength and that I think that we need to have improvement. Um, as a parent and as a stakeholder and as a business owner, um, the the way of getting communication it's great that the district has it all over which is good but some people just didn't know where to find it and unfortunately on your webs on websites you have to have everything on there and it gets a little bit confusing um, a couple places where we need to improve is that our board meetings need to be live so people can stream them live 
Uh, I myself am having an issue because I have to wait a couple days to see what happened if I can't attend the meeting because I'm attending a forum or another meeting. Um, and I, pre-COVID, uh, one of the things that I love to do is be out there and be at the schools and go to the plays. And I think building relationships and confidence with parents and the teachers and the students is important for them to be able to come and, and tell us uh, how they feel. One thing that I did get this week is somebody asked if we could move the board meetings to different locations so that it was more, it was in a different spot. My apologies, but you were over time. That's okay. Thank you, and now to question 11. What are your priorities for the Tempe Elementary School budget and why? Ms. Ewers, you may go first. First and foremost, it's to get our schools open um, safely for the teachers and the students, period. Uh, everything has kind of changed in the last few months and that's the main focus. So I wanna be a part of the conversation of how we're gonna to continue to do that. What steps are we going to take to be ready for what comes to, at us next? Um, the next thing that I would like to see is, uh, is uh, President Trejo had talked about this, was that we really need to up our dual language program. My son got off the bus last year and said, mom, I'm gonna practice and learn Spanish over the summer. And I said, why? And he said, because the kids that speak Spanish play on the other side of the playground and I wanna play with them. We already have segregation. So it's important that we give our students the tools to communicate and also make other students who are not communicating necessarily in English just as viable. So I'd like to see that start among many other things. Thank you, it's Ms. Trejo's turn. Would you like me to repeat the question? Yes, please. What are your priorities for the Tempe Elementary School budget and why? Thank you. Um, as mentioned earlier, I can't emphasize this enough, is I think it's important, first of all, that we have a bigger budget um, because we are fiscally managing everything appropriately at the moment. So in order to have, in, in order to implement all these great programs and ideas that we have, um, we definitely would need an investment in resources. Um, and I'm thankful, like I said, that the city of Tempe has stepped up to help us with programs like Tempe Free. Um, I'm proud to have advocated along with um, former council member Shapira on that. Um, also proud to be working along council member Randy Keating to help um, sustain and expand that in the future along with our other council, council members who have been so supportive and our new mayor as well. So I, I just feel very fortunate in that sense. So I think that that's definitely a priority is helping see how we can continue that program along with um, the, you know programs like dual language. And most importantly right now is a social emotional investment, um, you know, whether that's additional staff for our students and teachers as well, our staff who are returning and like um, struggling so much during this pandemic as well. Thank you. And now to question 12. How much of a role, if any, do parents and community leaders have regarding the education of their students? Ms. Trejo, you may go first. Um, they have all the, the, the biggest role in their the education of their child. I, I think it is absolutely you know, critical for, for parents to, to be able to have the opportunity to, to be involved in their child's education. And not every parent can be, and that's the reality. Um, I know that for me growing up, um, you know, my, my parent wasn't able to be as active. And so I think it's important that if ch uh, children aren't able to, to have that for whatever reason, um, that, that, you know, the school's able to, to provide that for, for them as well. But I think there should definitely be opportunities for, for parents to, to be involved in their, their child's education in different forms. And um, I know that we have a superintendent search coming up pretty soon. And one thing that was really important to me and my fellow board colleagues is that our community has um, say and input, and especially even our students. Um, I believe in huge in self-advocacy and, and to teach that for, for our students as well. So I think that, that um, you know, I, I would really, you know, continue to appreciate and advocate for your child. Like I said, parents send me emails all the time. I'm thankful for that as well, but any additional opportunities that we can provide for, for them to have a role would be um, great. Ms. Ewers, it is your turn. Would you like me to repeat the question? Please do. How much of a role, if any, do parents and community leaders have regarding the education of their students? Well, this is a big question. This does This is uh, not just about what's going on with our schools, but it's what's going on in our economy. 
unfortunately, as, as President Trejo had mentioned, we have families who can't be involved as they want to be. I believe every parent is completely invested in their kids and it's uh, based on the ability of paying the rent of what they can do. Uh, I was lucky to grow up in, an, in a neighborhood school system where the parents knew the parents. And when you're at the grocery store, if you saw Mrs. Smith coming down the, down the way there, if she said, are you bringing a cake to the fall fair? My mom said, of course I'm bringing a cake to the fall fair. So I worry one thing is, is being a better district, we do have students that come from outside the district and the parents bring them in, they drop them off, they go to school, they pick them up and they go. And I feel there's part of the system that those children and those parents are, are missing. Um, I, I just wish we could have a society where parents could focus more on their children and, uh, and how do we get there? That's a, that's a big topic of conversation and I have one second left. Thank you, and now to question 13. What are the biggest challenges facing elementary schools now? Ms. Ewers, you may go first. Well, on a statewide level, our biggest challenges are retaining and keeping teachers. Um, we have several class classrooms um, that, don't, that don't have a full-time teacher right now, and the school year's already started. In Tempe, it's very unique because I believe that uh, Superintendent Bush has created incredible relationships and she has been able to mentor and we have teachers who have been there a long time that this is home for them. So we're very lucky that every single one of our classrooms had a teacher. Um, I think again, focusing on the students needs and recruiting teachers. We have a 15 to 20 year focus on how are we going to get the best educators to come and educate our children and make it worth it for them and make it to where they can take care of their families doing this job. Because basically this is the most important job as far as I'm concerned in the United States of America today. So um, there's, there's a, a lot of things that we need to focus on, but that, that's something that I'd like to see. Thank you, it's Ms. Trejo's turn. Would you like me to repeat the question? Uh, yes, please. What are the biggest challenges facing elementary schools now? Thank you. Um, well, this pandemic, this pandemic has been challenging for, for parents, it's been challenging for our teachers, and it's been challenging especially for our students. So it has been incredibly challenging, and I think elementary districts have a little bit more unique challenges because we are dealing with younger children. And so with the high school level, um, them being home may not be as impactful or, or you know, harmful to them, but our elementary kids being home, unfortunately, they're not able to, some of them aren't able to take or look after themselves, which has impacted their parents greatly. And so just being able to meet the needs of our parents and our families um, has been a little bit more challenging. I think that there's a, a, lot, of, a lot of unique needs um, for our kids. Um, once again, going back to early childhood education, um, that is absolutely critical and foundational for our children. So being able to have more opportunities um, like that is really important for our elementary age students as well. Thank you. And now to our final question. If elected, what is the most important and necessary change or issue you want addressed while on the board of the Tempe Elementary School District? Ms. Trejo, you may go first. Okay, well, this isn't an issue, but um, one of the most important things besides this pandemic, ensuring that everyone stays safe, um, is actually having the uh, great successful transition of a new superintendent. So we have been so privileged to have Superintendent Christine Bush you know, with us the last several years. And um, my ultimate goal is to ensure that we hire some, some great people with community input and staff input as well, um, and have that individual be able to successfully transition and help meet the needs um, and, and, and you know, push our district forward as well. So to me, that is one of the most important things is that we have um, that opportunity to have somebody in place to, to not only um, get us through these moments in time, but also drive us forward academically um, and, and also every other field as well. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Ewers, it is your turn. Would you like me to repeat the question? Please do. If elected, what is the most important and necessary change or issue you want addressed while on the board of the Tempe Elementary School District? 
Well, one, um, I'd like to piggyback with President Trejo. She's, she's right on on the main things on, on COVID and superintendent um, search and that we get the right fit. Uh, but, but it's no secret that, that public under education is under fire and that uh, for a while I used to get really frustrated that fundings were leaving our schools to go to what I call unpromising circumstances. And um, I, 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 I'm, I was really frustrated about it. And I thought, well, how do I get this to change? And I talked to a really wise gentleman one time and he said, you make it irrelevant. And how do we make that irrelevant? We make our schools stronger. Um, I'd like to see that our, our students are more prepared for the high school level than they are right now. Um, and I'd like to continue to encourage the, uh, the schools and the teachers to, to have the ability in their classroom to do what they need to do to, to, to move that forward and just make Tempe Elementary School so extraordinary that we're not under fire. Thank you. We have moved through the questions more efficiently than planned. Each candidate will have three to five minutes to revisit any topics or share closing thoughts and ideas. Is there any topic or question you would like me to repeat? I think you did a great job. Thank you. Well then, thank you for sharing your thoughts on these topics tonight. You will be allowed one minute of closing remarks. If you were, you may go first. Well, thank you so much for having this. Uh, I'm, I'm really proud of what you all are doing here. And like I said, you're the most important generation that we've got to think about right now. And um, I, I'm the, the reason why I'm running is one, I'm a problem solver and the board needs a problem solver right now. Uh, I'm engaged in the community. I have clients in a vast amount uh, of different uh, places that have career needs, and I can bring that to the table, and I can also get their support. I think we're going to have to have some more uh, interaction between our, our stakeholders and our businesses in order to help our public schools, and they want to help. And I, uh, I, I want to be visible. I want to be engaged, and I kind of want to recreate the way that we reach out to our community, and I want to enhance that. And I, I, I think the board that we have now, we're very, very fortunate. It would be a pleasure for me to be on with them. And I'm grateful to have this opportunity. And if anybody has any questions for me, they can go to Allison Ewers, A-L-L-I-S-O-N-E-W-E-R-S dot org. And you can email me, my phone number's on there. And I'd, I'd love to talk to you because your concerns are different than mine. And I, I'm going to be representing you, so give me that opportunity. And I thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Trejo, it is now your turn. Uh, I would also like to thank you guys. You guys have done a great job and I know you, McClintock hosts this every school board you know, election. So thank you for continuously doing that and keeping our public informed on that. Um, for me, as I mentioned, I am running for reelection and I think there's a lot left to do, a lot of room for improvement and growth and Allison definitely alluded to some of those opportunities there. Um, I'd like to have the opportunity to continue to serve as school board, um, I'm currently the school board president. I feel incredibly blessed and fortunate to, to be able to do that right now. And it's, it's, I also wanna commend every single person running for school board right now in the middle of a pandemic, because let me tell you, it is not easy. And so I, I'm i just thankful to everybody who wants to step up to the challenge. And and for me, like this is this is really important to me. As I said, I, I you know study global health. I have experience in education and governance and policy. Um, I am a lifelong learner. I know I have a lot of room for, for um, growth myself, and that's why I continue to, to develop professionally. Um, just yesterday, I was on an edgenomics ed finance call. Um, I, I continue want to, to develop in this area, and, and I actually chose my dissertation on school board governance for this reason. And so I, there's a lot to do left for our students and for our, our community overall, because like I said before, if there's anything this pandemic has shown us, it's how critical our public schools are to a functional economy and we need our public schools to function as most effective and efficiently as possible and from everything from hiring excellent teachers to, to you know maintaining them and helping them improve their benefits 
to helping student achievement, to helping invest in social emotional learning of them. There is just so much um, that we have to continue to do and continue to grow and improve on. And I just feel so fortunate with the community that I'm able to serve on here in Tempe. And our parents have stepped up, our, our teachers have stepped up, our staff has stepped up. And, and overall, I'm just I'm thankful to you guys as students and to the students that we serve um, for their flexibility and patience. And as we were talking earlier, you guys were talking about earlier that you have just learned so much from this yourselves as students. And I, I feel um, really proud of, of the things that our students have accomplished as well. So thank you. Thank you. And one final thing, I'd like to share our website that features all candidates for Tempe schools. And also we would like to thank the candidates and audience at home for participating in this forum. We encourage you to vote either by early ballot or at the polls on November the 3rd.
like think of it.
Sean Fletcher just said he'll be joining us.
turn over host. Good evening. My name is Morgan and this is Zoe. We are students in AP government at McClintock High School. Tonight, we are moderating a forum for the Tempe Union High School District Governing Board candidates. The candidates for tonight are Mrs. Ba Ms. Bastian, Mr. Fletcher, Mrs. Hodge, Ms. James, Ms. Lowe, Mr. Montero, Mr. Myrick, and Ms. Reeser. As a special note, Ms. Reeser had a prior work commitment and Ms. Hodge is not feeling well this evening. Both candidates will join us to answer questions if they can. If they do not respond when their names are called, we will move on to the next candidate. Candidates, we will ask you several questions tonight and you will have 45 seconds to answer the question. A timer will, be, a timer will display the countdown on a Zoom window for the candidates to see and your microphones will be turned off when your time is up. But first, we will begin with opening statements. You will each have one minute to speak. Ms. Bastian, you can go first. Hi, um, thank you guys for this opportunity. I really appreciate being here and getting to share my views. My, my name is Lori Bastian. I've lived in the district for 17 years with my husband, Nick. We have three sons who all attend a school in our district. We have a sophomore and two freshmen. Um, we specifically chose to raise our family here because of the school district. We wanted our boys to have a great public school education. Um, Nick and I are co-owners of the small business here in the community. And I'm very committed to serving and promoting our entire community. I have zero political aspirations and I'm not pushing any agenda. I'm just a community stakeholder interested in serving our schools. Thank you very much, Ms. Bastian. Up next, we will have Mr. Fletcher. You have one minute. Thank you uh, for hosting this. It's a great event. I appreciate the students and their preparation tonight, and I look forward to your questions. I'm Don Fletcher. I'm a candidate for the Tempe Union High School District. I've been uh, in the Ahwatukee Foothills area for 33 years. Uh, my wife and I raised our four children here, and they've all gone through public schools. I'm very familiar with Tempe Union High School District. Uh, for the past four or five years, I've been involved on various committees with the high school, the finance committee, also been involved with the mental health and wellness committee. And right now I've been working with uh, our superintendent on the gifted program for Tempe Union High School District. Uh, I believe I bring a wealth of experience, a certain maturity, a certain voice to this uh, opportunity. Um, I'm a former teacher. Right now I'm a small business owner in Tempe, Arizona, and I look forward to bringing my background and my experience to the Tempe Union High School Board. Thank you very much. Um, up next, we will have Ms. Hodge. I wanna thank you guys, first off, by um, setting this forum up. I enjoy it every year that you guys have done it. I've seen you guys do it for the last, I don't know, four cycles, three, four cycles, and it's been phenomenal. I am Bradetta Hodge. I'm the current president of Tempe Union High School District Governing Board, and I am seeking re-election. I, <clears throat> I am also a graduate of Tempe Union High School District. I graduated from Tempe High School, and my sons, both boys, graduated from McClintock High School. So I am a product of the district, and I was a parent when I first got on the board. Um, <clears throat> 
I also want to apologize because I'm not feeling well today. So I might be in and out and any questions that is asked, I will definitely give you guys an answer and email. So you guys will have my answers regardless if I answer it on the form or not, I will definitely do that because I apologize that I'm not feeling well today. <coughs> Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Um, and next we'll have Ms. Lowe. Hey, thank you. Thank you, McClintock government class. You guys do an awesome job and it's always a pleasure to be here with you. So I'm just finishing my second term as your governing board member and I've been part of this community for 33 years with my husband, Mike. I've been involved with our schools and our districts for 25 years and all these experience, experiences, which include stakeholder committees, bond and override committees, um, a member of the Education Foundation, and today I volunteer at Threads, which is a, a shop for clothing for our students. But most importantly, as a mom of two sons, Patrick and Christopher, who graduated from Corona, and I got to see how the educational process impacted them. All those experiences have led me to this position. I am connected to this community, and because of these strong connections, I very much want to have a positive impact on each and every student that comes into Tempe Union. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next, we'll have Ms. James. Thank you. Thanks so much for doing this, and it's just so fabulous to see students being involved in government, but also in local government. I think it's just so vital, and we don't all le learn that lesson um, at such a young age. So thank you so much. Um, my name is Sarah James. I am a, an educator. I'm a mom of two kids in Kyrene. They're future Corona students. I'm a Tempe High School alum as well, and I actually started my teaching career at Desert Vista in 1999. Um, one of the things that I've learned uh, being an educator is that we have to also be advocates for education. And I've been doing that for most of my career. Um, I would, as a board member, I would wanna ensure that we're centering the needs of our students and of our educators. Our students need curriculum that represents them. They need support from counselors and social workers, and they need teachers who are empowered to meet their needs socially, emotionally, and academ academically. Um, so I'm running to be a voice and an ear for our educators, parents, and our students in Tempe Union. Thank you very much. Next, we'll have Mr. Montero. Well, first of all, thank you to the students at McClintock High for putting this together. Um, you know, this is your governing board. It's the reason I filed to run for this position and I'm on this call today. Um, so a little bit about myself. I'm a proud product of our Tempe Union Schools. I graduated from Desert Vista back in 2019. Uh, I first got involved mainly around the issue of mental health and suicide prevention. Uh, after going through a lot of my own struggles in high school and losing a friend of mine my sophomore year, I got involved at the district level and helped write and introduce a resolution to our governing board that's now passed more than a dozen districts across the state to begin to open a statewide conversation around mental health. Um, from there, I was able to work alongside our superintendent and governing board and district uh, to create and chair a student advisory committee to make sure that our students have a voice on a lot of the important decisions that affect their daily lives. Um, and through that process, um, you know, I was asked to run for the board this year by teachers, parents, and community members alike. Um, and you know, I think there was a large consensus that this is a voice that is really missing from our governing board a voice of the students that someone that has experienced the classroom knows what our students are facing, especially in times like these. So I'm excited to answer your questions and uh, thank you for the invitation. Thank you very much. Up next, Mr. Myrick. Well, thank you. Um, first and foremost, on behalf of myself and I'm sure the other candidates, Bernetta, we'd like to wish you a healthy and speedy recovery. We know that you're not feeling well, so I hope everything goes uh, okay. Uh, my name is Michael Myrick. Uh, I am uh, running for the Tempe Union School Board. I'm currently uh, the president of the Kyrene School Board. Uh, when I decided to run for the Kyrene School Board, I had three children in the district. I now have one in Kyrene and two in Tempe Union, both of which attend Corona del Sol, which is my alma mater. And um, I'm running for the governing board to bring uh, some leadership and expertise that I believe is uh, much needed over at Tempe Union, and I'm excited to help out uh, in any way I can. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, finally, we have Ms. Reeser. Good 
All right. Well, hi, everyone. I am uh, Paige Reeser, and I am a middle school art teacher in the Tempe Elementary School District. I apologize. I will not be on this uh, virtual uh, Zoom call for the whole time. I am doing parent-teacher conferences right now. So I'm doing what we do best as teachers, multitasking right now. So a um, little bit about myself before I go back to my uh, other Zoom call over here. Um, I have been a uh, Tempe teacher for the last uh, seven years at teaching in a Title I school. I run my own business as an artist and also work within the community to help promote ed um, education within the arts. Um, I have been recognized by Tempe Diablos and the city of Tempe for my excellence in art education. I've been endorsed by local uh, school board members, city and state officials, and recently got endorsed by our most recent uh, elected Tempe mayor, Corey Woods. I'm running for Tempe Union because I want to uh, give that perspective as a teacher, but a teacher that teaches um, our students that go feed into the high school district. And I wanna be a... Thank you very much, Ms. Reeser. Um, we appreciate it. Um, and thank you to all of our candidates for their opening statements. And I'll now hand it over to Zoe to ask the first question. All right, candidates, for our first question, we have what training or educational experience qualifies you to be a school board member? We will start with Ms. Bastian, if you would. So, um, as far as education and experience go, um, my husband and I own a local business, as I said, so we're both of us, I'm pr primarily the manager of the business and take care of a variety of functions. Um, but the main functions of a governing board is overseeing the budget, hiring and firing the superintendent and adopting policies. And these are all items that I'm quite familiar with in running a small business. We're gonna have to make some tough decisions, some hard decisions. And I also know, of course, how to run a budget and keep within that budget. So um, in addition to that, I've been a part of the community and running, um, being on the board of, of various organizations, part of the PTO and other youth sports and what have you. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Mr. Fletcher. If you need me to ask a question, up. please just ask. Yes, please. All right. What training or educational experience qualifies you to be a school board member? Well, first off, I'm a former teacher and I understand what it means to be a teacher. I remember the first time I stood up in front of the class and taught. And so I come from an education background. I understand teachers and I've been participating with education for some 20 years. Um, also, uh, I'm a parent. I've raised four kids. Uh, it's interesting uh, raising children and the and the ups and the downs and the bumps and the good days and the bad days. We'd always uh, have the highs and lows as we would talk to our children. And it's an interesting experience raising children. Uh, Tempe Union High School District has a budget of about $125 million. That's a lot of money. I've looked at, I've been on the finance committee. I understand the finances of our district. And I believe that I bring a wealth of experience of understanding how businesses operate and what businesses can do. Finally, I've been on several boards and committees and I understand how committees function. We have to find a way to work together and build coalitions and help our schools do what is necessary to function and to build strong communities. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Hodge, you are up next. Yes, I'm still here with you guys so I can answer the question. Um, what makes me qualified is because I've been a part of the district between Tempe L and Tempe Union my whole entire life from the age of 17 years old all the way up into my 40s right now. I've been on different commissions and committees throughout the, the not only just in the district, just in the city. I've also been volunteered through the state to sit on state education forums. So, and I think the biggest uh, value to it is that I am, I sat on this board for four years. You can never know exactly what to do on a board exactly until you sit on it and you actually start to, to do the work process. And I think that was my biggest 
contribution. I've also, I'm a business person, I'm not a teacher. I, uh, I started off as a corporate trainer, um, but I also work in Target. I'm, a, I'm, in a corporate off, I'm in a corporate office at Target. So I do understand business, but I think it takes a lot more than just business to understand to be a governing board. You also have to know your community. So I'm very involved in my community. I have been since, um, since like I said, I've, I've worked on campaigns and worked in with cities for the last 20 years. So I'm gonna continue to do My apologies, but you are out of time, Ms. Hogg. Next up, we have Ms. James, if you would. If you need me to repeat the question, please just ask. Thank you, I'm good. Um, so I am in my 22nd year as an educator. And I've actually taught at all grade levels. I've taught kindergarten through 12th grade. I teach music. Um, I've actually started my career in Tempe Union at Desert Vista. And I spent eight years teaching with the Department of Education in New York City. Um, and then I've been in Mesa since we moved back to Arizona in 2011. Um, I think that the voice of a teacher is vital on a school board. Um, we are such a giant part of a district. So I think that being an educator, being an experienced educator is really, really important. Um, I also serve on the executive board of the Education Association in my district, um, which comes with a lot of responsibilities from managing different schools and teacher needs to balancing our own budget as an executive board and uh, as an association. Um, I've been a longtime education advocate. I've walked for bonds and overrides and being a parent, I think that gives me another unique perspective. Thank you. Next up, we have Ms. Lowe, if you would. If you need me to repeat the question, please no, ask. I'm good. I'm good, thank you so much. So I've been a board member for eight years, so that means that we've approached many challenges in these last eight years related to budget, our hiring and firing or retaining our educators, our working with mental health. And um, we've had lots of different challenges that we've had to work through. But also I've been a member of so many committees and I've learned how to work with a lot of different people. I have learned that um, you have to listen more than you talk. I, I understand that there's always more than one side to any um, issue and that I never make rash decisions. Uh, my extensive knowledge of Tempe Union, I visit schools all the time. I talk with our leaders, our staff, and our parents and the students, and that has given me a unique perspective on the needs of each of our schools and how to work through all the challenges that we face. Um, I have a broad working knowledge of current educational issues, and I believe I... I, I apologize, but you are out of time. All right, next up we have Mr. Montero, if you would like to take the floor. Yeah. So again, one of the main reasons I jumped in this race was to bring a voice that I think has been missing from a lot of the discussions that the governing board has. Um, as someone who has been in our classrooms recently, and as, as a current student at ASU going through virtual learning, I understand the impact that virtual learning has both academically and mentally on our students. Um, as someone who has directly seen the impact that the board has had on our student body the past, the past several years, um, you know, I can bring a unique perspective. You know, I, I firmly believe that a governing board is strong and we have governing boards that reflect all parts of our community. And for a governing entity that oversees high school students, I think it's important that one of those voices be someone that still has strong connections to our student body, understands the issues we face and can bring a fresh perspective on how we solve them. Thank you very much, Mr. Montero. Uh, Mr. Myrick, you are up next. Can you repeat the question, please? All right. What training or educational experience qualifies you to be a school board member? Sure. Um, well, I think um, being a current um, board member of a neighboring district and the largest feeder into Tempe Union um, has allowed me to sit on a number of boards and activities within the district. I was our ASBA, which is Arizona School Board Association delegate for a year. I've sat on the tri-district retirement plan for the last four years, I currently chair that. And I've been president of Kyrene School District for the last two years. So I think that skill set and the leadership that I bring uh, is a great asset to have on any board and uh, certainly happy to contribute in any way that I can. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Myrick. Ms. Reeser, you are up next. Sorry, I'm hopping back and forth. Um, I think one of the biggest things that makes me a great viable candidate for this is that I'm a teacher within the boundaries of Tempe Union. Um, I will give my, uh, my knowledge and my perspective as a teacher who is in one of the neighboring school districts. So a lot of the programs that feed into the high school district usually start at the middle school level. Uh, and while I am not a parent of myself, but I have taught thousands of students that enter into the high school system. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reeser. And with that, I will hand the microphone over to Morgan. All right. Our next question is, what is one thing the district does well? We will begin with Mr. Fletcher. Sure. Um, I sit on the finance, or I've been involved with the finances of our district. I've read the audit reports that are done, and the uh, Tempe Union High School District stands out in terms of its financial transparency, in terms of the staff and what they do there. Uh, I, I, I believe that we should be complimented, or the staff and the administration should be complimented for the hard work that they do there. Uh, they received awards for their uh, for the for the finance that they do and for their transparency there. And so I, I, I believe the finance side is very well done. If you go to the board meetings like I do, you can see what's going on. You can see the budget. You can see the finances. You can see where the money's going. So I think both transparency and accountability is really high with Tempe Union High School District. All right, thank you very much. Next, we'll have Ms. Hodge. Um, next, we'll have Ms. James. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed uh, did recently, especially, is the district's commitment to being one family. We heard that recently in a board meeting um, from our superintendent and from our board members, that we are a district of seven schools, and while they are unique in their own way, we are all Tempe Union. And these decisions that we're facing with reopening schools, um, making decisions about the pandemic and different models of learning, um, I think it's very important that the district stays unified. We have limited resources, limited budget. And if we start splitting off schools that open or schools that don't, we are going to be limited and we will not do anything well. I know Tempe Union can do this transition from remote to in-person well, and I think they'll do it as one family. All right, thank you very much. Next, we will have Ms. Lowe. I believe you're on mute, Ms. Lowe. Okay, here we go. So one of the things I believe we do is we are very proactive in addressing needs that come to our attention. And one of these is mental health. Um, we have been struggling with getting enough support for our students and staff for about the last five years, but we have been working 100% on that. And today, um, I'm happy to say that we have full-time youth specialists in each of our schools. We are addressing um, kids as far as teaching them coping skills to um, help with their stress and anxiety. We have health and wellness coaches, and we find the time and we find the money that we need to, to fully support our students in this area. So. Whenever something comes to our attention, we immediately look up, get, get the, what is needed to be done to support our students. And it's very important to be equitable across all of our seven schools to make sure all of our schools have the same support services as. My apologies, our time limit is up. Uh, thank you very much. And we will move on to Mr. Montero. Yeah. I think Tempe Union is a leader in, in many aspects. Um, you know, when it comes to a lot of different uh, aspects of the governing or, or of the district, you know, a lot of neighboring districts from across the state look to Tempe Union for what we have done. Um, and, you know, something similar to what Ms. James said, you know, one of the things that I'm proud of for, and what I've seen coming out of Tempe Union is the family aspect that we bring. You know, we are unique in that we have seven schools in our, in our system, but we are a very diverse district. But we find ways to make sure that our district meets the need of all of our students. 
from every single background. And that's why I think it's so important that we do have a very diverse board currently and that we continue to elect uh, a board members that bring diverse and unique perspectives to our governing board. Thank you very much. Next, we'll have Mr. Myrick. Repeat the question, please. Yes. What is one thing the district does well? Um, you know, I would say that uh, the district, uh, at, as a end result, produces a lot of phenomenal um, students. You, you've got Flynn scholars, student athletes, um, AP scholars. So the, the district puts out a good product in the sense that you've got a lot of talented students who graduate and go on to do wonderful things. Um, all, the, all the high schools have some very notable alumni. Um, and, and that's one thing maybe the district should maybe promote a little bit more. You'd be surprised at some of the successful people that have been produced out of Tempe Union. But overall, I'd say, you know, they're doing a good job of producing what our community wants, which are, you know, leaders and visionaries and problem solvers for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we'll have Ms. Reeser. Uh, next, we will have Ms. Bastian. Can you repeat the question, please? Yes. What is one thing the district does well? Okay. Well, during the pandemic, I know that our schools have certainly had to pivot quickly. And the whole virtual learning was quite a challenge. But I must say that the teachers did a fantastic job with the synchronous learning and they have absolutely made the best of it and try to engage our students as much as possible. And I think overall, um, the kids are adapting as, as well as can be expected. In addition to that, I think also our SRO program has been a model across the country and that's certainly an important um, thing to keep in place during these challenging times so that we can establish and improve and foster relationships between students and SROs. Thank you very much. Next, I'll have Zoe uh, give the next question. Question three. Tempe Union students are currently learning online and slated to return to the classroom after fall break. Given the cur current COVID climate, would you have students learning in classrooms as normal, online only, or in classrooms with restrictions? And what restrictions would those be? We will start with Ms. Hodge. She's um, in an x-ray right now. All right, then we will move on to Ms. James. This is a really tough question. Um, the metrics right now in Tempe Union overall look good, but we still have 85281 that is in the red. Um, if we're going to follow the idea of being one family, then we should ensure that all of our zip codes are at a good level, um, below 7%. And until that happens, I believe we should stay remote and support our teachers through that um, and our students. We are doing really well with the remote learning and adapting from figuring out the Wednesday asynchronous learning, which I know has its ups and downs, but has given teachers a reprieve, um, focusing on how we can make this better until it's absolutely safe and teachers and students feel safe being back in the classroom. Thank you. Uh, up next, we have Ms. Lowe. Thank you. So we have a number of students that are getting D's and F's in their um, coursework. So I certainly support, we need to bring our kids back into the classroom, but we need to do it very safely. And we have given our families a choice to be virtual for the rest of the semester if they choose to do that. So I, I believe they have to be in, in class. I, I believe we have to support our teachers as much as possible. And um, we have a, a health uh, pr uh, procedure that I think will really keep everyone fairly safe. And as far as the 85281 zip code, it is in red, but it's it's come down from last week. So I, I have faith that it's gonna be in the yellow in, in the next week. So I, I, need, I believe our kids have to be back in class. We have to provide 
academic intervention as soon as possible, along with mental health support, because um, I think our kids and our teachers need that. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we have Mr. Montero. Yeah, so again, this is a very complicated question that, you know, no one really has the answer to, you know, we are dealing with a lot of unknowns with this current situation. Um, but, you know, I, I do believe that it's important that, you know, the district has done a phenomenal job with making sure that our students are supported in, in the current virtual format and that we continue to do that until we have the metrics that are safe, that we continue to involve our teachers into the discussion to make sure that they are, that they feel welcomed, that they feel safe since they're the ones that are in the classroom and know what they need best. Um, you know, again, the, I think that, you know, the important thing is that we are making sure that we come up with creative solutions to support our students, both social and emotionally and academically during this time. It's even when we do return to the classroom, whenever that is, you know, we have to make sure that we are putting the emphasis on our, uh, the wellness and safety of our students. Thank you, Mr. Montero. Up next, we have Mr. Myrick. Uh, thank you. Um, you know, uh, as president of a neighboring district, we um, created a, a phased in approach uh, for back to school, which I think was thoughtful, logical and measured. And I think anything you want to do as it relates to a return to an in person should follow those things. But I echo uh, Miss Lowe's statements that our kids need to return to class. And while you have one zip code that is still hot, there is no reason why the other six schools could could come back in a uh, in-person full learning environment. And I would encourage to do that. This, this virus isn't going anywhere. Even if you reopen and do everything right, people are still gonna get it. In Kyrene, we've had you know six or seven out of uh, the, the returning schools, so. Thank you, Mr. Myrick. Up next, we have Ms. Reeser. All right, up next we have Ms. Bastian. Thank you for this question. Um, I, I also agree with Ms. Lau and Mr. Myrick to a great extent because it's most of our kids need to be in person for that in, in person educational experience. A lot of them are struggling online, not all of them. So the only thing that I would add to, to what they've suggested is to offer a choice. To families. For those that still are not comfortable with returning in person, we continue on with the hybrid approach, the online virtual approach. For those that are struggling um, both academically and socially, emotionally, social emotionally, we get them back into the classroom as soon as possible. And I think we can do that for all of our schools. Thank you, Ms. Fashion. Up next, we have Mr. Fletcher. There we go. <laughs> well, I appreciate the question. We need to open our schools, and I think everyone agrees on that. For the educational experience and for the emotional well being of our students, we need to get them open. I agree with what Ms. Fashion said. We can do, uh, we can do a hybrid method. Uh, those that want to stay home and those that need those online uh, things for their own protection, we can certainly offer that to them. Uh, two weeks ago, I hosted a forum where we had six students from four high schools. And I got to tell you, I was impressed with the students who attended this forum and what they had to say and how they understand the problems and the challenges. They're very complimentary of the teachers and the hard work that the teachers are doing to make this thing work. But uh, I think we need to listen to the teachers and we need to be respectful of the teachers. We also need to be respectful of the mental health of our students. We need to get them back in the classroom and full education experiences as soon as possible. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. That concludes question three. I will be handing the next question over to Morgan. Question four is, do you support Prop 208? Why or why not? We will begin with Ms. James. All right. Um, absolutely, 100%, we need this. Our constitution in Arizona mandates that we provide an education for our, all of our students, a public education that is funded through and improved upon via taxation. We have failed. We have cut taxes. Our tax revenue is so low in this state, 
corporate tax um, credits are really high and we need solutions. 208 can be that solution. Um, it is only affecting 1% of the state's population, um, taxpayer population, and that tax bracket has already experienced so many tax cuts. So this is not going to be anything that is going to um, strain their economy. It will help us $940 million into our educational system. Yes on 208 for sure. All right, thank you very much. Next, you'll have Ms. Butler. Thank you. There we go. So I believe we need a steady rev revenue coming into our schools. We have never recovered since the 2007, 2008 recession and the cuts that were made. And I, and I applaud Invest in Ed for doing this. I have concerns because of the pandemic's impact on our economy that we will not bring in what they are forecasting. So I, that's one of my concerns. But my second concern is for all ballot measures, this one does not have an end date. So what that means is if this ballot measure does not do what we want it to do, we have to go back to the voters to stop that before we can get another ballot measure going. So yes, I support bringing in that extra revenue for our students and um, our public education, but I have some serious concerns as well. Thank you very much. Next, we'll have Mr. Montero. Yeah, so yes, I, I do support Prop 208. I will be voting for it. And you know, the reason is that this proposition is, is it's personal for me because I have gone for a large majority of my life through a underfunded public education system. And I've seen the impact that that has on our students going through large class sizes, seeing the impact and the burden that this has on our teachers when they're underpaid. You know, we need to be able, our, our public education system has been systematically defunded since 2008. And we have to make sure that we give the proper resources to do that. We've seen through COVID-19 that we are facing a lot of budget issues with, you know, declining enrollment, which is where most of our money, money comes from. You know, we're going to be facing a lot of budget issues. And we as candidates have a lot of proposals and things that we want to do, but that requires funding. So if, again, I, I will be voting for Prop 28. It's necessary to make sure that we have our strong public schools and investment in our public education system is an investment in our economy. All right, thank you very much. Next, we'll have Mr. Myrick. Uh, yes, I am uh, adamantly opposed to Prop 208. Uh, first of all, the governor is against it. The Arizona Chamber of Commerce is against it. The uh, Arizona School Board Association, I believe, I was told is also against it. Um, while I, I, I just think it's the wrong mechanism. I, don't, I think, yes, we need funding for schools. I just think there's other ways to do it. This mechanism that they're trying to do it is the wrong mechanism. And what that means is, and I've asked a lot of people, um, you know, they pick these obscure numbers, um, and if you really look at, look at it, um, who it doesn't affect just one percent; it affects about thirty percent. And the reason why Arizona has strong growth is people are moving here because it's affordable, and we don't have a, lo a lot of high taxes. But there's other mechanisms to do it. We could do a value add tax and accomplish the same thing. All right. Thank you very much. Next, you'll have Ms. Reeser. And as a reminder, the question is, do you support Prop 208? Why or why not? I believe you're on mute, Ms. Reeser. Sorry, multitasking not going well right now. So um, can you repeat that question one more time for me? Yes, of course. Um, do you support Prop 208? Why or why not? Um, I, of course, support uh, Prop 208. And I know we're really concerned about raising taxes in this economy right now, but um, one thing that uh, um, I know that one of the, the taxes, but the tax that we should be talking about is the one that teachers uniquely bear. The expectation that we spend our own income on supplies and resources is ought to be provided by the state. We have large class sizes. There's no other job like that in our society. And there's no clear answer of why teachers are alone to ask to do this for our, for our schools. Uh, we teachers are struggling in Arizona and our students, our kids deserve uh, better in our classrooms. And this is why I am supporting a Prop 208. All right, thank you very much. Next, we'll have Ms. Bastian. Currently, our 
per people spending is one of the very lowest in the country. And that's of great concern for everyone, for our entire community. I also am concerned about the way this proposition works. And so what I plan on doing is participating in a discussion that's being held next week, both for and against, because I want to learn as much as I can about this before I come out with a definitive answer on if I'm going to support it or not. However, I, I generally agree that the burden of education should not be on one group, but across the whole community. So I will respectfully wait until I get more information from both sides before I answer it. All right, thank you very much. Next, we'll have Mr. Fletcher. We need more money for education. We haven't been funding education like we need to. And I've been in the board meetings and uh, I remember a couple of years ago when the superintendent at the time announced it'd be a 1% pay raise for teachers after two or three years of no pay raise. Uh, two years ago, I participated in the Red for Ed movement. I went to McClintock High. I also went to uh, Corona High. I was at uh, Tempe High. I supported the teachers and what they were doing there. And I believe that it's important that we support education. We need more money for education. Uh, Ms. Lowe raised a very important point, though. There's no sunset to this ballot initiative. Most ballot initiatives have a sunset on them. Once a ballot initiative is passed, they generally have a sunset. If there's no sunset, the only way to modify this is to go back to the voters. So I absolutely am in favor of raising more revenue. For My apologies, your time limit is up. Uh, thank you to all of our candidates. Oh, my bad. Um, finally, we have Ms. Hodge. My apologies on that. I think she's still uh, in the grade, but I do know that she supports 208 and we'll be voting yes. All right. Thank you very much. Um, that concludes uh, question number four, and I will now pass it over to Zoe for question number five. Thank you very much. Question five. What equity issues exist for students in Tempe Union High School, High School District? How would you ensure an equitable education for all students that attend Compadre, Tempe High, McClintock, Marcos, Corona, Mountain Point, and Desert Vista? We will start with Mrs. Lowe. So equity can mean, mean a lot of things. Um, and I think what you're really asking is equity in providing um, opportunities to learn in, in, in academics is one area. And we, so we have to offer our kids um, equal opportunity for classes and for success while they're here in high school. But we also then have to provide support services for each of our school sites for our students so they can be successful. And what that means today is learn is really I really um, talking to each student like teachers need to recognize each student and learn a little bit about their background, their cultural background, where they come from. So they feel valued in that classroom. Um, so we are trying very hard to address academic challenges, not as a group by but as my apologies, Ms. Loeb, but you are out of time. Next up, we have Mr. Montero. Yeah, so school equity is, you know, one of the large focuses of my campaign. You know, I do believe that we need to make sure that we offer the best possible education for every single student, no matter their background. Um, when I was a student at Desert Vista, I was proud to be able to join forces to work on our diversity initiative and to jumpstart a diversity assembly that, uh, you know, brought those important points that Ms. Lau brought up about, you know, the different backgrounds, the importance that we all have as one community. Um, but beyond that, you know, there's a lot that policy can do, such as working, you know, making sure that we are working with making sure that all of our students have access to the necessary resources, necessary resources in this time, but also be sure that we're responding and assessing the students that may have fallen behind when we return to the classroom, but also to make sure that we are involving every part of our community from Chandler to Awatuki to Guadalupe to Tembi to make sure that we involve every part of our community in our discussions. Thank you, Mr. Montero. Up next, we have Mr. Myrick. Well, I, I would echo what some of the other candidates have responded with. Um, I can tell you in Kyrene, um, we engaged Corwin, which is a national firm that does equity training and 
uh, originally it was just going to be for some staff members and as president of the board i made equity mandatory for the entire board and all staff and so there are equity training programs for students as well um, i think certainly given the current environment there's more of a need for equity now than there's ever been certainly when we look at equity we we often tend to forget those students that uh, are underserved, underserved who are our special ed and gifted students. And so that's a component as well that uh, is not being served equitably. Thank you, Mr. Myrick. Up next, we have Ms. Reese. Well, um, equity, I think really right now when we're looking at, first of all, at the pandemic, I think when we're looking at equity, I think the pandemic has really shown and kind of exposed of where the inequalities that we're having in um, our schools. We're starting to see that, you know, food insecurity. And I think Tempe Union has done a great job at making sure our, our students have been fed during this time, because how are we expecting students to learn when they are not getting their own personal needs met first? Um, I think some of the things that we also equity, depending on, we are a very diverse uh, high school district, but also making sure that we are meeting the needs of our special needs students, um, uh, adjusting certain schools, depending on the kind of programs that are needed for different uh, backgrounds of our students is really helpful during for equity. Thank you, Ms. Risu. Up next, we have Ms. Bastian. Well, as many of the other candidates have said, our student population is very diverse. And as I've been running for this board position, I've talked to a lot of people in our community and it's really been eye-opening to hear some of the issues that they were having. Um, they're, they're having very different experiences depending upon which school they go to even. And so I think, equity needs to be broadened to include our dis disadvantaged populations of special needs, kids with learning disabilities and what have you, um, but to also look at the inequitable situations we've got just within our own schools to try to even that out and level the playing field there as well. Thank you, Ms. Bastian. Uh, up next, we have Mr. Fletcher. Well, I support several of the comments there about special education. Uh, I have a son who graduated from Gilbert Distant High School who was dyslexic. It was interesting going through that experience with him there. I had another one of my children who had an individual learning plan, and, and we need to be careful and sensitive to those students. But I think when you talk about equity, it's bigger than just the uh, students with special needs. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a frank conversation about racism. Mm -hmm. I know, but and, uh, I'm trying to some not of the experience here. with this, uh, I've been involved with two major training programs on latent bias. If I'm a member of the Tempe Union High School Board, uh, we're going to have some discussions and some sessions on what it means to have latent bias and how that impacts both the faculty and the staff as well as the students. Latent bias means that sometimes we don't think we're racist, but we really are. And sometimes... Thank you, Mr. Fletcher, but you are out of time. Uh, Ms. Hodge, if you are here, it is your turn, but I'm pretty sure she's still in an x-ray because they are not very fast. Uh, up next then we have Ms. James. Yes, um, equity is one of the central components of why I am running. Um, as an educator, I see the inequities in our educational system from representation in our schools representation in our curriculum. Um, and as Mr. Fletcher was talking about that um, implicit bias that we all do have and need to recognize if we're gonna get anywhere um, with this work. There are definitely inequities as many candidates have said when it comes to our special needs communities um, and their access to things such as some of them don't even have access to sex ed at all. Um, so there are so many components we need to look at. We need to look at um, opportunities that our kids are given. Uh, not every kid wants to go to college. We need to have more CTE programs. Um, we need to ensure that. My apologies, Ms. James, but you are out of time. For question six, I am handing the mic back to Morgan. 
Thank you, Zoe. Um, for question six, it is, um, since the shutdown in March, awareness of student social and emotional needs has increased. What measures has Tempe Union taken to help students and what additional services should be provided in terms of mental health and suicide prevention? We will begin with Mr. Montero. Right, so this is the issue that got me involved in this district and the reason why I'm running for this position. You know, I uniquely understand the impact of, of what students are going through right now as a student at ASU, and I can tell you it's not easy. But this was an issue long before COVID-19. You know, I think the largest thing that we can do, there's a lot that policy can do, and the district has done a good job at that. But there's a lot that policy can't do, and that's destigmatizing mental health. We as a district have to make sure that we are going in and making sure that we reduce the stigma surrounded around mental health. We can hire more counselors and social workers, but I can tell you the amount of students that are afraid to go to their counselor because mental health is viewed as a weakness and is stigmatized currently. We can look at health curriculum or find ways to foster open and honest conversations to reduce the stigma around, around mental health. That's the first thing we have to do if we wanna see change in the right direction for mental health. All right, thank you very much. Up next, we will have Mr. Myrick. Well, I, I would just echo what we said that, um, you know, there is a stigma with mental health unnecessarily. And I think one of the things we could do is start with our incoming freshman class and carry um, a format through all four years and, you know, have professionals um, instead of having pep rallies, maybe we should have some mental health rallies and bring in some national speakers and experts on the subject and talk about it. I think that would be a good use um, of, of school funds and times uh, for that. Uh, but most importantly, one of the things we did in Kyrene is we, we put more counselors um, in our middle schools. And I think we could, we could hopefully do the same thing at Tempe Union and, and have that uh, resource available to our students. All right, thank you very much. Next, we'll have Ms. Reeser. So I think one of the biggest things that I can, um, echoing from what um, Mondo said, but uh, one of the biggest things that we can do is just start off with having the conversations that we need to be having about mental health. It is a very tough subject. It's a really hard subject, especially as a teacher who has had students go through these issues within the classroom. It is something that I feel even as a teacher, we should have more training on. So making sure that we have staff buy-in and a staff buy-in to make sure that when we are having these conversations within the classroom, we are having the proper training to make sure that our students are safe, feel safe and welcome to start to have those conversations. Um, but I think it starts yeah, with staff buy-in and making sure that we have that leadership coming from the top with our administration. All right, thank you very much. Next, we'll have Ms. Bastian. So I've been living with and witnessing the social and emotional toll that this current pandemic is having on our kids. And it's a great concern to me. Um, we've had five or six kids now, I believe, um, in the East Valley that have attempted and completed suicide since March. So it's certainly an issue that we need to take extremely seriously and throw all the resources that we can I, I, for one, believe that for a lot of students, getting them back into the classroom is going to be extremely helpful. And teachers and other students will be able to identify kids that may be struggling and get them more help and the resources that they need. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, next, you'll have Mr. Fletcher. And as a reminder, the question is, what measures has Tempe Union taken to help students and what additional services should be provided in terms of mental health and suicide prevention? Mr. Fletcher, you have 45 seconds. Well, thank you for this question. I think we're all in agreement that we need to work harder at this. As a parent, I had two daughters who had dear friends commit suicide. I understand firsthand how this impacts an adolescent. Uh, for 18 months, I was on the mental health and wellness committee that Tempe Union High School put together. And we developed a series of recommendations. Several of those recommendations have been implemented. Some of them are not yet. And as a governing board member, I wanna go back to those recommendations and I wanna make them work. I wanna see that they're there. I agree with Lori that we need to get the kids back in the classroom for their mental health and their emotional well being. But this is a big issue that we need to address. There's things that we can do and I look forward to making this a priority. 
Thank you very much. Um, if Ms. Hodge is here, she may answer next. If not, we can move on to Ms. James. Thank you. Um, teachers are really on the front lines when it comes to our, the emotional, social emotional health and mental health of our students. Um, we have to take care of our educators so that they can in turn take care of students. We cannot give anything if we are empty. Um, so we also need to consider our educators. Um, and as Paige said, we need that training as well. Um, I know that we now have supports, uh, the youth support um, staff at every school, one on every campus full time, which is a great start. And as Mr. Montero said, you can put a million counselors out of school, but unless there's access and there's training as to how these students are going to get there and there's the destigmatization of mental health, it's not going to make a difference. So we have a lot of work, but we have a good start. Thank you very much. And finally, we will have Ms. Lill. Uh, you're on mute, Ms. Lill. Okay, here we go. So some of the things we're currently doing is um, our lead psychologist is work, has worked with our teachers and that she has asked them to watch our kids carefully in the virtual mode. And if they, if they identify any students that change their behavior over time, to either reach out to them by phone call or possibly talk to the principal about doing some uh, reaching out to the family or to that student. And because we, we do have some support services that we are pro providing today. And one of the things we also have done is we have brought some of those kids back onto campus earlier. I think it was August 17th when we started bringing kids in. And so some of those higher kids, higher need kids have been brought back on campus. But the, some of the things that we do is we do parent workshops, we do ongoing emails to all of our staff about how to talk to kids. Um, we're doing training right now on what to say to kids that are exhibiting signs of uh, depression. Thank you very much, Ms. Lovin. Unfortunately, your time is up. Um, and that concludes question number six. I will now hand it over to Zoe for question number seven. Thank you, Morgan. Question number seven. What would you add to the current high school curriculum to better prepare students for career and college in the 21st century? We will start off with Mr. Myrick. Um, I bring vocational tech back uh, on campus. I think there is, uh, at least from the private sector, such a need and demand. Um, and, and these jobs, which were once considered um, you know, middle wage salary jobs are now really some of the high high producing jobs that are out there. You know, metal fabricators and welders are making over $120,000 just a couple of years um, out of uh, trade school and learning a trade. And, and a lot of my friends that um, own these types of businesses being electricians or welders uh, learned in high school, got their first experience in high school with those. So I really think CTE and vocational tech bringing back on campus is the way that we uh, move forward. Thank you, Mr. Myrick. Up next, we have Ms. Reeser. I was just about to echo exactly what he was saying also. I think we need to make sure we're focusing on our trade schools. Um, and it's not only from my artistic background with welding and that kind of thing, but I think when you're looking at preparing our students for the future, you know, college does not fit for every student. And these, uh, you know, trying to encourage students to go to trade schools is something that I think is very vital for our economy. Not only is it good for a stable job for our students in the future, but it's also something that we need for our nation. Thank you, Ms. Reeser. Up next, we have Ms. Bastian. Thank you. Would you mind repeating that question for me again? Of course. Uh, what would you add to the current high school curriculum to better prepare students for career and college in the 21st century? Well, we all know that there's been a heavy emphasis on college for many years and getting to college. And I absolutely agree with Mr. Myrick that we need to have more options for our kids with the vocational careers and skills. I also think life skills with financial literacy should be a um, mandatory for students. And um, I think they just need to understand basic skills like baking and 
how to balance a checkbook, things like that. So um, that's what I would suggest moving forward too. All right, thank you, Ms. Bastian. Up next, Mr. Fletcher. Sure, I support Ori's suggestion there. We need more basic life skills taught. How do you do a checkbook? How do you buy a car? How do you apply for a credit card? These things need to be taught in the high school to prepare our students. Uh, the second thing is 30% of our students uh, surveys show do not have a career path when they graduate from high school. They're not going to college and they don't know what they're doing. And we need to do more in this area. I have experience with the trades. Uh, my daughter went through East Valley Institute of Technology. I understand how that works. Having said that, we need to bring those trades back to our schools so we can get good paying jobs. And those 30% of the students that don't have a career path, we need to start talking about that when they're juniors and sophomores to get them on a career path. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. Up next, if she is back, Ms. Hodge. And if not, Ms. James, you're up next. Thank you. Um, I think we're all on the same page when it comes to CTE, the career and technical um, education um, is really important to ensure that we are promoting all different opportunities to our students. Um, but I also think, one of, again, one of the reasons I wanted to run for this was because I do think we need a more representative curriculum overall. Um, whether it's in our music curriculum, I teach music, uh, my curriculum still has music in it from minstrel days. Um, and we need to ensure that our teachers aren't teaching that harmful thing. I, sh I shouldn't be graduated from high school, graduated from college before I learned about the Tulsa bombings. We need to ensure that our kids are getting a well-rounded education so when they go out into the world, they know their world and they can make it better. Thank you, Ms. James. Up next, Mrs. Lowe. Thank you. So one of the things we have to be careful of is our budget and there's no way we can bring a lot of the CTED classes offered at EVIT back to our campuses. Um, and EVIT does an outstanding job at some of the programs like welding. Um, and we have to be careful. We have to provide opportunities that reflect the workplace. So I can tell you that culinary at some of our schools are not offered anymore. And what's replaced that is robotics and engineering. So what I would like to see is all of our schools have a strong robotics and engineering program that's very expensive. And I would love to find the funding for all seven of our schools to provide this for our students. So. Um, that's that's one of the areas that I, I'm very passionate about. Thank you, Ms. Lowe. Up next, Mr. Montero. Right. Again, I think we are, uh, you know, majority on the same page here about, you know, being able to expand our vocational and career and technical, technical education courses. You know, um, we are very focused on college readiness. I know talking to my former counselor at Desert Vista, you know, a lot of the times we are very heavily focused on getting students into, you know, the best possible schools with the most amount of scholarships. And a lot of times that does have mental health impact. But at the same time, a lot of those students that um, don't want to go to college or feel that college isn't for them many times feel left out. So we need to make sure that we are fostering a culture of supporting those students to where if they know that college is not the best route for them, that we have the courses and the support there for them to make sure that we guide them through the high school process and being, made, being able to make sure they graduate with the skills necessary to go into whatever their post-secondary endeavors are. Thank you, Mr. Montero. I will be handing the mic back to Morgan for the eighth question. All right. Our next question is, besides attending a school board meeting, what can or will you as a school, as a board member to hear, oh, my bad, let me repeat that. <laughs> besides attending a school board meeting, what can or will you do as a board member to hear parents, students, or employee concerns? We will begin with Ms. Reeser. I think one of the biggest things that you need to do as a board member is be seen by the public. I think attending, um, school events is really important to not only to lead your board, but also to really get to know what is going on within those schools. So I think that's one of the first things that you can do as a board member is make sure you're attending school events. I think another thing that you can do is be a part of committees and have parents and other stakeholders, even students be in, or, and teachers be involved in those processes of things that we need to focus on for our schools. 
All right, thank you very much. Next, we have Ms. Bastian. I believe you're on mute there. Okay, sorry. I was just <laughs> trying to understand the question again. So it was what, besides going to board meetings, how can uh, you yes, hear from um, our community? Uh, yes, besides attending a school board meeting, what can or will you do as a board member to hear parents, students, or employee concerns? Um, well, I think it's very important to just be open and available to make sure you have an open door to the whole community because that's one thing that I really want to make sure is that the, the families in our community feel like they have an ear and that they can come to me with any sort of concerns or praises that they have so that that can be relayed to the district. Um, a lot of families aren't feeling heard right now and um, I think it's just super important to have that open door and to have an open mind along with that to hear many sides of an issue. Thank you very much. Next, we will have Mr. Fletcher. Sure. I want to be a community voice out in the community. I think our school board members should be at the Kiwanis Club. They should be at the chamber meetings. They should be writing articles. Part of the problem we've had with education is we haven't convinced our community of the value and importance of education. And that's why the funding wasn't quite there. And we need to be out in the community. We need to be engaged with the community. And so I agree that we need to be at the different events supporting the, uh, the, the concerts and the athletes and all those things. But as a school board member, I'll be out in the community talking to the community and getting input from the community. I think that's critical to make sure that we're convincing the community that education is important and it should be valued and it should be funded where it hasn't been in the past. All right, thank you very much. Um, next, we have Ms. Hodge, if she is back. I am back. <coughs> so um, can you repeat the question for me, please? Yes, of course. Um, besides attending a school board meeting, what can or will you do as a board member to hear parents, students, or employee concerns? Um, well, is it, I always, I, community service has always been number one for me. So not only do doing all the activities through the schools. I actually go into the kids' classroom and I actually have something special with every one of my schools that I do with them so I can get in contact and face with my students. I do a lot of community service throughout the, the city. I sit on boards, commissions throughout the city because I want to make sure the education is always first and forehand. Um, I, I am on a lot of different boards, so I do a lot of community work. And anyone who knows me knows that they have, they can get my cell phone number. Parents, teachers, students all call me. So I'm very open and they can see me anywhere. I'm, I'm very public. So those things matter the most. Thank you. All right, thank you very much and welcome back. Um, and then next we will have Ms. James. I think, um, what somebody said it earlier that listening is one of the most, I think uh, Ms. Lau <laughs> said, uh, listening is one of the most important things. You have to listen more than you talk. And that does involve going out into the communities, but we have to make that accessible for all of our community. Um, we need to make sure that our communications are um, in Spanish always. Um, if we're live streaming a board meeting, we should have translation available. We should have closed captioning, American Sign Language. We need to make sure we are reaching our communities. Um, and I would work um, very hard at doing that, ensuring that our families that need paper communication get paper communication. Um, so they all feel included in the decision making and the process that we are gonna be going through as a district. All right, thank you very much. Next, we will have Ms. Lowe. So my job today is being a board member. So I spend a lot of time out at our school school sites, um, visiting with our leaders, I attend events, I talk to our teachers, and all those conversations I have make me a better board member because I learn what's important to them at their school, what they need out there. And I have built a really, really trusting relationship, I believe, with each of our school sites. They welcome me and I welcome them sharing what they are, what they're concerned about, what's working well. And the other thing I do is I spend a lot of time on stakeholder committees. I learn and I listen to stakeholders about what's important to them in public education. So all of those experiences really help me make better decisions. 
All right, thank you very much. Next, Mr. Montero. Right, I, I filed to run for this office back in August of last year. And I've spent that year talking with every corner of our district to hear their concerns. And I have learned so much. And that's why, you know, I firmly believe that our, the, the role of us governing board members is to be a bridge from our community to our district, to bring the perspectives and, and the needs of our community to the district operations. And, you know, as a board member, I would be committed to going to our schools, talking to our students and our teachers and our administration on a, on a regular basis. And, you know, not just talking to our student leaders, but also just, you know, the everyday students that normally, normally don't have a voice on the governing board, because those are the perspectives and the issues that we have to pay attention to if we're going to make sure that we serve all of our students. And I would be committed to that as a governing board member. All right. Thank you very much. Finally, we have Mr. Myrick. Yes, I would, I would say, um, you know, as someone who's a current board member, you could literally spend 365 days a year going to school events and they're, they're all wonderful. And it, it's a shame when you can't find, find time to attend one. Um, but I think most importantly, and I think what our community wants is a board member who's responsive to the community, community as they ask questions. Um, I think they want us to be as a board member, a facilitator for their concerns. Um, and most importantly, I think the biggest thing you can do is, you know, have great communication with your superintendent and also your teacher rep. We have a KEA, which is Kyrene Education Association. We each, each board member has a rep. And so we, I'm always in contact with our reps to kind of get the back channels of what we need to do. And that teacher voice is important. All right. Thank you for all of your answers. And I will now, I will now pass it over to Zoe for question number nine. Thank you, Morgan. Question number nine. Do you think Tempe Union should keep SROs or st student resource officers on campus? Why or why not? We will start with Ms. Bastian. Yes, I think they should be kept. Um, I think they're a vital part of our school communities. I think they make everyone feel safer. I know that staff spoke at um, one of the meetings recently and gave us a lot of great information on on the relationships that SROs bring to the schools and in the current environment that we're in I think it's even more critical that we we established good foster good relationships between police officers and, and students so that that's an excellent experience that they have and can can go through life with that first experience. And I absolutely support SROs. Thank you, Ms. Bastian. Up next, Mr. Fletcher. Yes, I support the SROs. And let me tell you why. I remember Parkland High. And if any of you don't remember it, go back and look it up. It happened in Florida. It was a very tragic event. At my student forum that I had, there was a student from Tempe High who told me that in the last school year, a gun was brought on campus. And the student was so happy that there was an SRO there to help deal with that issue very quickly and to make sure that the students were kept safe. Student safety is a very, very important part of what we're about at Tempe Union High School. I believe we should provide that. But also, as mentioned by Ms. Bastian or Lori there, the police on the campus, the SROs, at least at Tempe Union High School District, are a very positive role, and they help build those bridges, and they help the students feel safe, as well as they also participate in various school functions. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher, but you are out of time. Uh, up next, Mrs. Hodge. <clears throat> Thank you for the question. Um, it's a two part for me. I support SROs, but I also support the fact that they need training and counseling because we do have students and our minority students are, are they have a different outlook on police. So I always caution that we make sure that all of our kids feel safe around them. And I don't want our SROs to take the place of what we need counselors and social workers. There are two different things. I think they can work together, but I think our students also need social workers and counselors because some students have told me they don't become in police. I think that we can cultivate a relationship with them, but we also have to make sure that they're trained properly because I don't want any of our students feeling that they're not comfortable 
on campus with with any uh, with the police or anyone. So I, I that's why I said it's a two part question for me. Thank you, Ms. Hodge. Up next, Ms. James. Thank you. Um, I think I echo what uh, Ms. Hodge said uh, that when we think about the safety in the school, we have to think about the needs of all of our students in our communities. Um, and we have to think about all of our schools, though, as well, and the different needs our schools have. So in Ahwatukee, we hear the constant need for a better response time from our police department. So looking at those concerns and analyzing the best option for that is vital. Having one SR on campus is not going to completely fix that problem. So what else could we do? Um, we have to look at what the job of an SRO is and ensure that they're not being tasked with jobs, as Ms. Hodge said, that are better suited to counselors or certified educators. Um, looking at Corona, they have an early intervention program that involves their SROs that works with restorative justice and has been really, really effective. Um, so we do have to understand, though, that a trained and licensed counselor can't be replaced, and we shouldn't place that burden on anyone. My apologies, Ms. James, but you are out of time. Ms. Lowe, you are up next. So you have to look at your experience as a district. And I will tell you firsthand that our SRO's focus has changed from law enforcement to one of being a valuable member of our mental health team. They go through lots of training as far as how to talk to students. They, students love these kids. Now, I, I believe there's some kids that are somewhat afraid, but I have searched high and low. I've talked to uh, district or school leaders at all of our seven schools and they assure me this is not a problem that our students love our SROs and that's because they take the time to talk to kids they go to events that the kids are in and they become part of that family and so it's very important I think um, for us to make sure that our SROs are focused on students and they choose to be SROs because they want to have a positive long-time impact with kids and also to teach them so they don't end up break. Ms. Lowe, you are out of time. Up next, Mr. Montero. Right, I think this is, you know, a multifaceted question. You know, they're um, back to echoing to what Ms. Hodge and what Ms. James said, you know, we, we do have to critically examine the role of our school resource officers on campus. You know, because I, I personally do know a lot of students that do feel uncomfortable with having an armed officer, officer on campus. So it's important that, you know, we have those uncomfortable conversations. You know, we, our country is going through a unique time right now, and these are conversations we should be opening with our community. Um, you know, Tempe Union has done a lot on the student safety aspect. You know, we've worked very closely, and I've seen the impact that we've had in expanding our security forces and what they do on our campus and the positive impact and relationships they've had with students. You know, we also have to make sure that we're looking, again, at the role that these resource officers have and making sure that they're not being tasked with things that could be better handled through, you know, counselors or social workers. Thank you, Mr. Montero. Up next, Mr. Myrick. Uh, yes, I, I would just echo what the majority of the candidates have stated that um, uh, school resource officers are necessary. I certainly support them on campus. Um, and you know it's a it's a fine uh, line between being a police officer and a counselor and i'm just hope that we're not tasking those folks with things that they're not uh, prepared or or trained in um, but most importantly it comes down to community policing and a lot of these these police officers certainly by a lot of younger men are looked up to in some regards as a father figure when there was one absent in their homes so I, I see a school resource officer as a positive thing uh, for our community and in our schools. Thank you, Mr. Myra. Up next, Ms. Reeser. Um, I saw so the, the role of the SRO can provide a lot of safety on campus and help relieve a lot of that burden from teachers. Um, I have seen personally SROs build positive relationships with uh, my own students. I think that when we look at SROs, we need to look at a site-to-site -site basis and see, fill out the needs of the school. I think also having high school student input and seeing how our students feel about an SRO on campus, uh, giving them a choice in the matter would be really, um, I think, helpful in that decision-making. I think also making sure that we're not using uh, district funds for SROs, but make sure we're applying through state grants to help fund them 
keeping district funds for social emotional needs in classroom instruction and other resources for our students. Thank you, Ms. Reeser. I am now handing the mic back to Morgan for the 10th question. All right, so for our final question, um, it is going to be, if elected, what is the first goal you would set for the governing board and how would you accomplish it? So you're going to begin with Mr. Fletcher. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. The first goal I would do is I'd sit down with the superintendent and say the next high school graduation, I'm gonna have all of the students stand up and be recognized who received a CT certificate or who graduated from a vocational education program. We often talk about all the scholarship money, but we don't talk enough about the trades. And I wanna start at the high school graduations. And I wanna make sure that at those graduation, we recognize those students, much like my daughter who graduated but did not receive that recognition. I think they all should be they all should be recognized. The next thing I'd want to do is I'd want to look at our budget. We all know that there's going to be a budget crisis coming, and we got to be careful. We got to look at our dollars and see how we can make them work in the coming days. Thank you very much. Next, we will have Ms. Hodge. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> the first thing I would do when I'm reelected is we got to look at the fact that we are in a pandemic. We have to get go back to the we have to go back and make sure most of our students and teachers and our staff are first in priority because it has been hard on everyone in this pandemic. Um, that would be one of my first things, social emotional. My second thing is I know some students um, are not online learners and I feel that some fell behind. We have to make sure that we have, we have services to make sure our students um, are back to where they need to be. And if they need more help, we need to give them more assistance. So mine would be more about making sure my staff and my students are um, continuing to go through the pandemic and post pandemic after we open back our schools. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, Ms. James. Thank you. Um, I will say something pretty similar to what uh, President Hodge said, and that is, ensuring that our staff and our students social and emotional wellness is taken care of we are going to have a teacher um, shortage we have a teacher shortage already and it's only getting worse um, we want in tempe union to have the most highly qualified educators for our students so we need to make sure that our educators are taken care of i want open communication with our teachers i want them to have a seat at the table what are they going to need to succeed in our district and feel like they are empowered to teach our students. Because when you empower teachers, we empower students. Thank you very much. Up next, Ms. Lowe. Thank you. So as a board member, I really don't set a goal for the, the school board. A lot of those needs come to us and we address them. But one thing I we need to address is the exhaustion of our teachers and our school site leaders and our students, we need to get them back in class and see where they're at. There, there's gonna be a lot more needs. We gotta find um, support for them. We're gonna have to find some budget uh, allotment to get some intervention for them. So that's my, my priority goal um, come January. Thank you very much. Um, up next is Mr. Montero. And the question again is, if elected, what is the first goal you would set for the governing board and how would you accomplish it? Right. Well, the first thing that I would do is ensure that, you know, we that I sit with our superintendent, our district, our students, our teachers, administration to make sure, you know, I get an idea of, you know, what the district has been doing behind the scenes and what, you know, my perspective. Better improve on, um, you know, being able to 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 understand what's been happening and build those relationships, I think, is, is the first goal that we should have as board members. Um, and beyond that, I want to echo what Ms. Hodge said. You know, the social emotional aspect of this is, is, you know, is great. You know, a lot of students have gone through trauma. They've lost family members. Um, and we need to make sure that when they return to the classroom, that our district some of the inequities that we face to make sure that we can respond to and to assess, assess and respond to our students and make sure that they feel heard and that they have the necessary resources to continue on. Thank you very much. Next, um, Mr. Myrick. Yeah, I think, um, you know, a lot of board members or, or potential board members are missing the point. And the first thing I would do as a board member is, is request a board retreat. 
where we could have uh, the board get together along with the executive team and have some professional development come in on leadership training and collaborative board practices. ASBA is great. Um, they do those uh, from time to time. And, and really, so, so the board can get on the same page as far as, you know, what do we do? How do we work together? We're gonna have differences. No board, you know, is unanimous all the time, but how do we work through our differences and, and have the best end result uh, for the district? And so um, that's what I would do. I think that is the very first thing that needs to happen. Thank you very much. Up next, Ms. Reeser. All right, so when elected coming into January, we're gonna be facing some difficult challenges within the next year to probably two years, especially with, when we were looking at our budget. So I think one of the biggest things we, uh, I would do is sit down with teachers, uh, sit down with the superintendent and figure out what are the goals in place and what are, are the resources that we are gonna need as a district to be successful, not only for the social emotional needs of our students, but how do we meet the social emotional needs so we can have ac academic success and making sure that we are retaining teachers within the district is really, really crucial in order for us to be successful for the future of Tempe Union. Thank you very much. Finally, Ms. Bastian. I would like to focus on a more comprehensive communication plan. Communication is an area I feel like Tempe Union needs a significant improvement. Um, I believe timely and transparent communication to all stakeholders is key and it's key to any successful organization. Um, this is gonna relate to meeting the educational needs of students too. We need to find out if they're struggling due to the extended shutdown, if their special needs are learning disabled. We need to communicate the needs of students and get the appropriate remediation. And um, we need to make sure that the teachers have the supports that they need to support our students too. Thank you very much. That concludes the final question and I will now hand it back over to Zoe. I would like to thank the candidates for sharing their thoughts on these topics tonight. We will end our forum with one minute of closing remarks from each candidate. We will begin with Ms. Bastian. Sorry, I'm having technical difficulties. Uh, I just wanna thank everybody for this opportunity. I appreciate the students putting this on for us. Um, I thank the other candidates and Berdetta, I certainly hope you're feeling better and get out of that hospital. Um, I just wanna conclude by saying, I think it's super important to have different perspectives on a board and right now, I think we're missing an important one. As a parent of high school students, I bring a different perspective and I firmly believe that what we've currently got on the board is extremely valid. We need all the different voices out there, but we've got to have one that has some skin in the game too, one or more. Um, I'll work towards improving communication, like I've said several times, between the district families and staff, and I'll keep pushing until we get that work done and get our community involved. Sorry, I'm out of time. Thank you, Ms. Bastian. Up next, Mr. Fletcher. Well, I pay great tribute to the teachers and the great work that they've done. I. Uh, recognize Paige having to go back and forth tonight. That's great that you could be with us. I appreciate uh, Sarah and her contribution to music and what it means to be a teacher. I've been a teacher. I understand the challenges of being a teacher. I've also been a parent of four children who have gone through a high school system. Uh, I understand students. I understand the challenges that they face. I understand the challenges that they're facing today. And I appreciate the things that they're going through. Uh, as I said in my recent student forum, I was amazed with their resilience and how well they're doing, but we need to support them through emotional health and well-being. I also want to recognize that we need leadership. We need people of maturity. We need people who have served in boards and have been in various places. And frankly, I believe that I will arrive day one at the school board 
ready and prepared. I've participated on the board and I've been involved with many board issues. I think I'm ready to serve and make a big difference on Central Union High School Board. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. Up next, Ms. Hodge. <clears throat> thank you, guys. I want to first off say thank you guys for being so patient with me while being in and out of uh, getting x ray students. You guys always shine and you always make me so proud. Thank you to Kim for doing this for us tonight. I'm doing it every two years with us, Kim. I really enjoy it. Um, I want to say, um, Lori and Mike, thank you for your wishes for me to get better. I hope I will soon get to the hospital. Um, I just want to say, as a governing board, as a governing board member of Tempe Union, I believe that we are, and I'll always say it, we're all one family, one Tempe Union. It takes from the time that I volunteered to, to go into the Lupe Court, even being taxed. I think that a governing board member should not only just sit on a dais every time, every one, um, every other Wednesday. I think that we need to be in our community and getting to learn our our different student, our teachers, staff, and and our students. So um, I thank everybody for all eight, seven of us, seven candidates, and myself for doing this because it always gives me a a great mind to look at other. My apologies, Ms. Hodge, but you are out of time for your closing statements. Up next, Ms. James. I had to do it once, right? Um, thank you so much, and thank you for holding this forum. It's been really wonderful, and I think you did a brilliant job, students, so thank you. Um, I think having the voice of an experienced educator on a board is vital. Um, I know I can provide that voice of an experienced educator and an education advocate. Um, I think that Tempe Union is such a big, diverse district that I know every student needs to be seen and heard and represented. Our staff and students deserve to learn in a safe environment. Our educators have to feel empowered to teach. I wanna to listen to our communities and help ensure that all of our students have a voice. Um, I believe that collaborating with our communities, our parents, our students, our educators is vital if we're going to be the best district that we can be. I also want to end with, um, I did get confirmation that the Arizona School Board Association did in fact just endorse Proposition 208, which I think is a fabulous thing. So I just wanted to make sure that knowledge was out there. Thank you, Ms. James. Up next, Ms. Lowe. Thank you. Thank you uh, for hosting this. This was excellent and I really enjoyed being here and uh, Burdetta, I hope you feel better soon. So as a longtime community member, I do this job because I wanna have a positive impact on students. That's the only reason I am a school board member and I would love to continue in this role. My in-depth knowledge of school budgets, the unique needs of all of our students and our teachers Recognizing the importance of addressing academic as well as mental health needs will always uh, make my decisions positively impact our students for a long time. I believe my decisions will always focus on what's important in excellence in education, basing decisions on facts, stakeholder input, transparency, as well as strong communication will be a priority, but my focus will always be end result for students. I believe today our schools are facing serious challenges and I believe I have the experience to address them in an effective and efficient way. And I would be honored again to continue to use my extensive experience in public education to make the best decision. My apologies, but you are out of time. Up next, Mr. Montero. First of all, again, thank you for, for hosting this forum. It was great to see you know the students getting involved and learning about their, their school board. You know, you know, again, I, as I mentioned before, this is your school board, and it's the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm in this race. Um, you know, I, I jumped in because I think we have a unique opportunity to give students an opportunity to have board members that look like them, that understand them, and have gone through the ups and downs of high school with them, and have sat alongside them in the classroom. That's a perspective that we haven't had on this governing board, and one that I think is vital to make sure that we have the most informed decisions for all of our students. You know, I want to go back to what Ms. Bastian and a lot of other candidates said about having those unique perspectives. Um, you know, I, I understand what students go through, and I've seen the direct impact that this board has had on our students. Um, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be both nationally and locally endorsed by so many amazing uh, leaders in our community that understand the importance of bringing this new voice. Um, 
And, you know, and tomorrow we're going to be release, releasing a new endorsement from four generations and more than 12 student body presidents from almost every high school in our district supporting my campaign because they recognize the importance of bringing this voice and their voice to their governing boards. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Montero. Up next, Mr. Myrick. Thank you. Well, I'd just like to um, reiterate that uh, we're all lucky to have eight people running for three suites, uh, three seats. I saw today that there's 73 school boards that have zero people running and they're hoping to uh, appoint someone. So um, we're blessed and fortunate to have uh, people that are passionate about education. But uh, what, what Tempe Union needs now more than anything is leadership. As president of the Kyrene School Board for the last two years, I've demonstrated that in fact so much that the Arizona School Board Association just announced that our board uh, was nominated and will be awarded as one of the top boards in the Southwest. So we do a very good job. I'm happy to bring my skill set and leadership and being a collaborative leader over to Tempe Union and work with everybody um, to make the district better. Um, the district's great. We can always do improvement and use improvement. And so I hope to be that voice uh, when elected. And uh, again, I just want to adamantly oppose Prop 208. Thank you, Mr. Myrick. Finally, Ms. Reeser. Well, thank you again, students, for uh, putting this on tonight. You guys did an amazing job. I also want to apologize to the audience for with me being at parent-teacher conferences. If you would like to send me an email, you can go to pageforschools.com, and you can ask me those questions that I was not able to address uh, earlier on in this forum. But um, again, teaching is one of the greatest joys of my life, and I will love to have the opportunity to serve my students yet again at the high school level. And I will promise to always advocate for all of our students, teacher, parents, and uh, stakeholders. I not only want to be a voice uh, for our teachers, but what our students are going through on a daily basis. And I think it's very crucial right now that we have a teacher voice on the board. We provide a unique perspective that no one else can. So I know you guys have a lot of decisions to make, but I hope that you guys, that I will be one of your votes in November. Thank you. With that being the last of our closing remarks, I will hand the mic over to Morgan. All right, thank you um, to all of our candidates and the audience at home for participating in this forum. Um, and we really encourage you guys to vote um, either by early ballot or at the polls on November 3rd. Uh, thank you again to all of you. We really appreciate uh, you taking your time to join us today. Thank you. Also, thank you. please do not forget about the website we have for this forum tonight. It is the MHS Candidate Forum. You can look it up. I, I don't have the ability to share a screen right now, so that's about it. Hey, Zoe, can you do me a favor? Can you send me all the questions that I missed? And I, I definitely want to oh, address yes, them, of okay? course. You have my email. Yes. Okay. Thank you. No problem. You guys have a good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Bye. Thanks.